When attempting to understand the concept of criterion measurement in I.O. psychology, we must first know what criterion is. Criteria are typically dependent variables that provide an indication of success or performance. In I.O. psychology, criteria are defined as evaluative standards that can be used as yardsticks for measuring employees' success or failure. The most interested areas is in performance. The actual on-the-job behaviors relevant to the organization's goals. Now, play along with me for a minute. Just sit back and relax. Are you ready? Okay. It's time for your test. Your pulse begins to race and you start to perspire. Do you see it? <laughs> yes, you do. Most people do not like to take tests. Even those who consider themselves good test takers or have done well on similar tests in the past. People are apprehensive about the results and what they may discover about themselves. Tests taken, however, is part of people's lives from the moment they are born, even before birth. Why is there so much testing if so few people like it? Is it really unavoidable? Is it known that testing can improve the ability to make a medical diagnosis and predict outcomes? Most personnel selection and screening processes involve the use of psychological tests. The use of good psychological tests increases the likelihood that the most productive applicants will be chosen at the lowest cost to the organization. Like any good test, a useful psychological test is an accurate measure of behavior and knowledge. Not only does bad tests results in poor employee selection, the cost of making poor choices can be very high both on the organization and the employee. In our next few lectures, we will explore more about testing in I.O. psychology, performance management and predictors, testing formats, and personality tests. I will even supply a few free personality tests for you to take. Now let's get back to criterion, the ultimate criterion. Well, the ultimate criterion encompasses all aspects of performance that define success on the job. An example for defining the ultimate criterion for an administrative assistant's job, for example, are as follows. Type and speed, type and quality, filing efficiency, creativity, Interactions with clients, interactions with co-workers, written and oral communication skills, computer skills, interactions with supervisors, punctuality, and initiative. Now, the actual criteria is our best real-world representation of the ultimate criterion, which includes only those elements of the ultimate criterion that we intend to measure. The crucial requirement for any criterion is relevance. And what is relevance? Relevance reflects the degree of correlation, and correlation is the relationship between variables, okay? So relevance reflects the degree of correlation or overlap between the actual and the ultimate criteria. Relevance is the percentage of variance in the ultimate criterion that the actual criterion can account for. 
Reliability refers to the stability or consistency of a measure. An unreliable criterion is not very useful. We cannot confidently use it in making important decisions. Let's move on to distinctions among performance criteria. And this is where we talk about objective criteria versus subjective criteria. Objective criteria are taken from organizational records and is often based on counting. They do not involve subjective judgments or evaluations and viewed as the cleanest criterion measure. And it, it this is great for you guys to actually know the difference of subjective information versus objective, because you hear this all the time in psychology. Is this, you know, opinion based on objective measures or is it subjective, which is just your opinion? So please know the difference between the two. So again, Objective criteria are taken from organizational records and is often based on counting. They do not involve subjective judgments or evaluations, and it is viewed as the cleanest criterion measures. So examples of objective criteria and measurement would be uh, an employee's absent, how many times they've been absent in the past month lateness, turnover, accidents, grievances, productivity, and counterproductive behaviors. These are all factual data that you could get from the employee's records. Now, subjective criteria are performance measures that are based on the judgments or evaluations of others rather than on counting. Most published studies on criteria deal with subjective criteria, also called quote unquote soft or judgmental criteria. Typical subjective criteria include ratings or rankings of employees by other employees, such as supervisors, coworkers, and subordinates. Now remember, when attempting to understand the concept of criterion measurement in I.O. psychology, we must first know what criterion is. And like I stated before, criteria are typical dependent variables that provide an indication of success or performance. And in industrial organizational psychology, criteria are defined as evaluative standards that can be used as yardsticks for measuring employees' success or failure. So, the most interested area in I.O. psychology is in performance. The actual on-the-job behaviors relevant to the organization's goals.